Police Department were called to the area of uh, Florida Avenue and New York Avenue uh, for an individual who was behind the wheel of a vehicle, uh, unconscious in traffic. Uh, officers responded to that location. They observed an individual who was behind the wheel of a black uh, BMW vehicle, and that individual uh, was armed with a firearm uh, in his waistband area. Uh, the officers uh, called for additional units uh, to assist them, uh, developed a tactical plan. Uh, they also deployed a, uh, a ballistic shield uh, in an effort uh, to shield themselves from any uh, potential gunfire in this situation. Uh, they attempted to uh, awaken the individual from inside of the vehicle. At some point, uh, the individual, uh, he, was, he, uh, he awakened uh, from his sleep. And at that point, uh, that individual was engaged uh, by officers. Uh, and then from, at that, from some point from, uh, from there, such shots were fired. Uh, the, the subject was struck. Uh, the subject was taken to an area hospital, and he has been pronounced uh, deceased at this time. A uh, firearm has been recovered uh, from the vehicle at this time. Uh, this matter is also under investigation by Metropolitan, by Metropolitan Police Department, uh, Internal Affairs, as well as our homicide unit. Uh, these are very preliminary, uh, uh, very preliminary information that we have at this time. I uh, don't really have a lot of uh, a lot of additional information. Uh, this matter is still under investigation. Uh, we'll be conducting the daylight canvas. Uh, we're asking that residents who use the New York Avenue corridor uh, that they try to avoid this area. It's, it's going to be uh, pretty hectic for morning rush hour, but we're asking residents to please find an alternative route. And if there's any information that residents want to report to the police department, to please reach out to us at 202-727-9099. Could you any say questions? more about the, uh, the person perhaps gave the call to 911 about the relationship between we don't know. Uh, it was a person who called in 911 because they saw the vi the vehicle was stopped in traffic at a light, and the person was uh, appeared to be unconscious behind the wheel of the vehicle. So it wasn't until they got to the vehicle they were able to determine it was a, a officers. Gun. Yeah, when they responded uh, to the scene, looked inside to see what they were actually dealing with, uh, they saw the individual inside with the with the handgun uh, with the handgun secreted here. So it was at this light over here, Florida Avenue. It, it happened back at Florida Avenue in New York. So uh, how did it end up over here? After the uh, shots were fired, it appeared the individual in the car uh, drove the vehicle from there down to this location where it came to rest uh, right behind us here. Do we know anything about that interaction? At what point the engagement turned that police felt they needed to fire? So uh, at, the, at this point, it's very early in the investigation. It's kind of hard to determine. As I mentioned, uh, there was a ballistic shield uh, that was deployed. So as we review body on camera and look through this, we'll try to get a, a better picture of what happened. But right now, the initial officer's body on camera appears to be uh, somewhat uh, 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 restricted. The view is somewhat restricted because of the ballistic shield that's deployed in front of him. If that makes sense. So, this person is stopped at New York and Florida and is asleep. Is asleep behind the wheel of the vehicle. I, we're not sure of what if there was some kind of um, uh, intoxication or under the influence of something. We just don't know that uh, at this point in the investigation. But in the roadway, not in the parking lot? No, not in the parking lot. In the far right hand uh, traffic coming in, inbound DC. So, Chief, is there any sort of procedure or playbook with how to deal with that kind of a situation? Well, it's, uh, it's not a situation, obviously, that we want to find ourselves in, uh, but clearly what we know is that we had an armed individual behind the wheel uh, of, a of a vehicle. Uh, between the time that the officers responded and the time that the officers actually uh, engaged the individual, uh, there was probably about a 20-minute gap, so in that time, the officers were formulating a plan, trying to figure out the best way uh, to resolve this with an, uh, an armed individual uh, behind the wheel of a car, sleep at a at a traffic light, uh, and unfortunately, uh, you know, this individual, uh, you know, he was in possession of a firearm. So tonight. did they wake him up? The individual, it's, um, um, there was an attempt to wake the guy up, and you can uh, see from what I've seen from BWC, he did awake, he was awakened at, at some point, uh, but they were very careful trying to, uh, you hear things like, you know, we don't want to scare him, you know, that kind of thing, as they were uh, working their way through the, as work, working their way really through the scenario. So uh, right now, again, this is very preliminary stages of the investigation. Uh, we still have a lot that we have to go through, video cameras in the area. We need to review uh, all of that, look at the uh, history of this individual, you know, why is he here at this point? Just a lot of unanswered questions that we don't have right now. And now this is the second this, this police involved shooting never that shot the, uh, uh, at the police, right? We don't know that just yet. Um, we just, that's part of the investigation.
So this is the second yeah. police involved shooting yeah. in 24 hours. Yeah, it is. How are you feeling about that? Yeah, well, I mean, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that uh, we have to come face to face with armed gunmen in our community. Uh, you know, clearly when people are in possession of illegal firearms, we've been talking about that for a long time. Uh, it makes communities unsafe and make our police officers unsafe. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate that someone lost their life tonight. You know, I'm happy that our police officer, uh, that he was not injured uh, in this situation. But, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, we don't, you know, we don't, it's not something that we, that we look to be involved in. And how many officers were involved in the, in engaging with you, so to speak? So there were probably about uh, maybe four or five officers at least, but only, uh, it appears right now, maybe only one uh, person uh, may have fired, fired a shot. And do you know anything yet about this particular firearm? Um, no, we don't know. Uh, we have our representatives from the ATF. Uh, the head of the Washington Field Office of the ATF is here uh, with us. Uh, he's on the scene. Uh, so they'll be doing a trace on the uh, firearm to see exactly uh, what, we, uh, what we have. Um, you know, from what we know preliminarily, uh, this individual is known to law enforcement. Uh, you know, just kind of some of the preliminary checks that we've done, uh, the individual is known to law enforcement, and, um, and we'll, we'll just have to we'll have to see what the rest of, rest of the investigation reveals at this point. Thank you. That's just really all that we have. Yes, sir. He reached for the weapon as he was being woken up. Was that well, the deal? It's hard to say okay. again because again, there's a there's shield. a shield that's in front of the person. Uh, who has the body on camera? So it's kind of hard to say at this point, not having being able to uh, interview the officers or anything. We just don't know that level of detail at this point. But we can say that the person had a firearm uh, on them inside of this vehicle. So thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate that.